Should I go over that article that someone, that philosophy indie wrote about me? Do you guys want to see that article that someone wrote trying to bash me? Give him his time in the sun. Okay. Okay, check out my uh my website. People don't like the color, I like the color, so So questioning Rem the Bath Boy's moral realism. Okay, fine. I'll change the background. Introduction. Rem the Bath Boy is adamant about refuting moral anti-realism and defending moral realism. However, I think Rem is not a moral realist. If anything, I think his view is more comfortably aligned with moral anti-realism. Specifically, rather than being a realist, I think Rem is much mo much closer to some sort of relativist or subjectivist subjectivism. To begin making the case, let's see how Rem handles moral realism. First, Rem emphasizes above all else the truth value of moral statements. In other words, he's concerned with defending cognitivism. Cognitivism in metaethics is the uh, the view that moral statements are capable of being true or false. That is, they have truth value. Examples of cognitivist views include error theory, realism, and subjectivism. Cognitivism stands in contrast to non-cognitivism, with the latter holding that moral statements are meaningless or not true that. In defending moral realism, Rem states that he's concerned with refuting non-cognitivism and error theory, so he commits himself to cognitivism as well as a denial of error theory. However, this leaves us with an awkward leftover from the camp of cognitivism, moral subjectivism. After all, subjectivism, as is generally understood, also denies non-cognitivism and error theory. More awkwardly, I have to least suspect that subjectivism is closer to Rem's actual view. So, the first thing that you should realize here is this entire article is trying to paint me as holding certain views that I've never ever uh, ad adhered to publicly. I've never stated that I hold them. And there's no possible way that you could derive these conclusions in any charitable fashion from the things that I have said in metaethics. It's just, it's impossible. And I'll explain why. I believe the problem begins to seep in when Rem constantly denies that metaethics deals with metaphysics or ontology. I've never said this. Never, I have never said that metaethics it just cannot deal with metaphysics or ontology. That's ridiculous. I mean, I think the best parts of metaethics are those that aren't ontological. I'm more concerned with the epistemic foundations of metaethics. But to say that metaethics as a discipline, that I think that metaethics as a discipline does not deal with ontology is ridiculous. I mean, what do you think the naturalism debate in metaethics is? Or that moral motivation question is? Those are ontological questions. So, I mean, I don't personally regularly engage. Well, no, I do engage with some of them, but that's all the stuff I talk about on stream. But to to take the leap from, well, Rem doesn't talk about, you know, ontological issues in metaethics to I deny that ontological issues play any part in metaethics is just completely ridiculous. Rem, because of his allegiance to transcendental idealism, Wittgenstein and pragmatism. So for one thing, I'm, I'm, I don't consider myself a transcendental idealist, okay? I certainly do not consider myself a Wittgensteinian. Uh, and if I am a pragmatist, I'm only a pragmatist in spirit because I reject most of the conclusions that the pragmatist writers come to. Um... Unfortunately, and I have to agree with Destin here, Rem's take on metaethics and moral realism is controversial or at the very least not well known or obvious. And as pointed out above, his view threatens to make moral realism compatible with moral subjectivism. And I'd like to make explicit here a reasonable assumption I am making while writing this post that any realism that can allow moral subjectivism relativism is not meaningfully realist. So again, 
I mean, I, I don't know how many times I've had to say this on stream and in YouTube videos and on Reddit posts and just everywhere that when I say moral realism, I always try to give a very explicit definition of it, right? I define it as moral realism for me is when a, a moral statement has a truth value and there actually exist certain moral propositions that are that can be said to be true. And I call this moral realism because it is called moral realism in a very specific subsection of metaethics in some papers dealing with the companions and guilt argument. So that is where I took that from to oppose it to non-cognitivism plus error theory. Per and I've admitted this. Perhaps then I shouldn't have called it moral realism when I first talked about it years ago now. Uh, with destiny because that's going to be confusing to people but there's no sense in abandoning it now and there's no i don't think there's any real issue here given the fact that i am constantly i am constantly defining what i mean by moral realism so this entire this entire article is just so incredibly ridiculous because this is not what i mean by realism and this you're just talking past me here um, because I've not stated any positions with regards to moral realism or an ontological moral realism. Uh, and also, as I should say in my own, in my own thing here, I, I bring up the point that there are multiple, um, ways to consider yourself a realist in science. So there's semantic realism, epistemic realism, and metaphysical realism. So... From my tradition and training in the philosophy of science, right, um, it is certainly you know, not, a per not unheard of to treat realism as a, as a semantic realism having to do with the, the truth aptness of moral statements. Just like scientific realism can, or epistemic realism can deal with the truth aptness of scientific statements example and their constituent parts and how they play a semantic role um so all this is really just you know completely talking past me and it's just completely um irrelevant um so whether he uses the label or not it seems to me that rem is espousing some sort of minimal realism there's no source for this there's no reason why he has there's no reason why he's reached this conclusion of me holding minimal realism. There's, you know, maybe I think he ex tries to explain it later on with my supposed allegiance to Kant and pragmatists and um, Wittgenstein uh, down here. But as of now, there's no reason to think this of me. I've read some metaethics, but I'm not no expert or scholar. I haven't gotten around to every e esoteric view. But this problem isn't unique to me, as it pains me to say Destiny was on to something in a recent debate with Rem. Talk to random people with philosophy background, and it's less likely that they are aware of Rem's view of metaphysics and realism than the one Destiny takes. It's just completely wrong, because I very clearly define what moral realism means in my discussions, and everyone is capable of understanding what that means. I don't make a claim that there can't be moral realism in the ontological sense, and that that can't be discussed, because that's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. The majority discussion in metaethics has to do with ontological claims in metaethics. It has to do with, um, you know, it, that debate about naturalism and non-naturalism. Um, at least as far as I'm concerned, that's still the major debate in, in metaethics now. Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't understand this. Um, and then we get to the real funny part um, and a bit distasteful part. To make my point, if one were to go around a random philosophy department that wasn't heavily indoctrinated by Wittgenstein and Hilary Putnam. Okay, I go to the University of Toronto. <laughs> um, I don't know any Wittgensteinians. I don't know any people indoctrinated by Hilary Putnam or Wittgenstein. Most are hardcore realists in almost every single way. Um, my philosophy of science department is almost completely scientific realist. Um, same with my, my ethics department. It's almost always subjectivists um, and moral ontological realists as well. Uh, and I've, I, I've derived basically none of my own philosophical views from my professors. I, that's just not how I... In fact, I'm, I'm, because of my incredi incredibly skeptical attitude in general, 
I'm very skeptical of adopting any professor's views on a subject until I have had like, until I read their arguments. I'm not going to take, I usually won't take anyone at face value um, uh, on their positions and just adopt them without first reading their arguments for them because I'm willing to go and take the time to do that. Um, so this is a weird ad hom that is, you know, completely just ridiculous. Also calling him Hillary Pukeman is very distasteful. Uh, you know, Hillary Putnam recently passed incredibly uh, all philosophers I've ever talked to utmost respect for Hillary Putnam. One of the most charitable philosophers there are one of the most, brilliant philosophers ever um i think that's distasteful but um in other words they'll see blah 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 when i discussed meta ethics or moral realism with my professors and while they may not specialize in meta ethics they always told me that they were not acquainted with the view like rems that of some sort of minimal realism i still don't know what minimal realism is he still hasn't dis he has he still hasn't defined uh minimal realism here for us so I'm not totally sure what he thinks my view is with regards to this. Um, the conversation tended to default to something like Destiny's interpretation of the issue, a realism founded in Kantian philosophy and Pukeman's attack on the dichotomy between objective versus subjective, which I'll touch on in the next section, which again, as I've said, you know, philosophy in D is not ask yourself. Um, moral success theory. Are you talking to me, uh, John? I don't know what the success theory is uh, with regards to. Um, which again, I don't, I don't disagree with. I, there is an objective and subjective debate in metaethics that is absolutely reasonable to have. So why the discrepancy between Rem and Destiny, myself, the philosophy professors I've talked to, and the philosophy texts that I've read? Why can we all see eye to eye with each other, but be rather excluded from men's handling on the topic? I don't know what... Um, Oh, I see. Okay. I see what you mean. Um, I don't know what philosophy professors that you talk to, but if I go to my professor and I ask them for their opinion on moral realism defined as um, whether or not, you know, moral claims are truth apt and at least some of them hold, they are not confused by that. They're more than able to have that discussion with me. They might have a different definition for that, but it doesn't matter because they are more than capable of understanding that it's just a positive definition for this very specific conversation just like universal is going to mean something for a very specific type of discussion or analytic you know etc um is rem just operating on some super high level philosophy and going above the heads of people from destiny to myself the philosophy professors no i'm positing a definition for the sake of certain discussion that is going to be from my point of view the most conducive to having that companions in guild discussion uh, do we have to delve more into the literature to catch up to Rem's understanding of the issue? No, because I rigorously define the terms that I'm using. Uh, well, I don't doubt that Rem studies the topic. I don't think the problem here is a huge disparity in knowledge between myself or Destiny and Rem. I mean, Destiny has read zero on metaethics, so you can't say that there isn't a huge disparity in knowledge. Uh, there absolutely is a huge disparity in knowledge between Destiny and myself and Destiny and Philosophy Indy here. I don't know what the point of that is. But again, it doesn't matter. I've rigorously defined the term. And if you want to use some other term for the discussion, then fine. I mean, we'll call it that. But I'm very explicit by what I mean by moral realism. It has precedent in, in philosophy of science. It has precedent in metaethics in relation to the Companions and Guild argument. Further, I'm worried Rem at times treat his knowledge of the topics as a default or a non-controversial take and uses to posture people's objections into silence. But obviously, coherentism is much blah, blah, blah. Well, what does this mean? I don't understand what this is supposed to mean. Because again, I'm just, I start the discussion by defining what I mean by the term. So how is this posturing? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, he does a nice jab at ask yourself, which is which is quite nice. Um, the problem is which philosophers Rem is drawing from and treating as the center of the discussion, as well as the views of the philosophers he's glossing over. 
As hinted at earlier, I think Rem ignores metaphysics due to some allegiance to Wittgenstein uh, and many pragmatists who eschew traditional metaphysics or tend to be anti-metaphysics. But this isn't enough to capture Rem's esoteric view. I mean, I do have an anti-metaphysics strand, but if I'm being honest, it probably comes most from the logical uh, positivist school and like specifically someone like Carnap. Um, it certainly doesn't come from Wittgenstein. Uh, it does come in part from the pragmatists. But again, it has no relevance to the to the discussion um, because I've recognized that metaphysics, again, can play a very important role in metaethics. Well, Pukeman specifically is a source of a lot of this confusion with him arguing that we should do away. So he, he gives a, a spiel about pragmatism and why it is that I'm adhering to it. And it's all... You know, he tries to posit that the reason I am a minimal realist is because of being influenced by Putnam uh, and and Wittgenstein, which is, of course, not true at all. But OK, um, because, again, I actually I as I said here. OK. Despite the fact I do not often discuss it on stream, I would identify myself as a moral objectivist and quite ardently too. Whenever I'm asked what normative framework I ascribe to, I usually hint towards the fact that I have a lot of sympathy with contemporary deontological models and specifically would identify myself as a Parfidian. I can think of no other combination that is more juxtaposed to a subjectivist model of ethics. I do not usually discuss this topic on stream because I feel it would be irresponsible to advocate for an area of discussion I feel I still do not have an adequate amount of knowledge and experience in. I've read many books on normative ethics, however, I still have countless doubts about certain views and I'm still exploring and reaching my own conclusions in this area. This applies equally well to the debate between subjectivism and objectivism. I heavily lean towards, as of now, objectivism, but I'm very open to the possibility, as well as, as with most things, that it could turn out to be false. So... I mean, his entire thesis is wrong. Um, and then he has this great thing about how Kant basically really entails um, a hyper-skeptical uh, <laughs> view about knowledge. Um, plainly, whether right or wrong, one can't deny that there is a, at least a genuine worry about transcendental idealism leading to or being supportive of skepticism and anti-realism. Um, and it would be funny if transcendental idealist was incentive to the appearance of this word worry. So for one thing, I'm not a transcendental idealist. For a second thing, the the Kantian interpretation that I use in my arguments when dealing with, you know, the question of epistemic realism or anti-realism, or whether epistemic statements have truth values, uh, is specifically Allison's methodological interpretation of Kant that is not at all skepticism or skeptical, and I think is the fundamental the best objection to skepticism that there really is. Um, but again, I can employ various other arguments that serve the exact same function as that Kantian argument that I give. I've done one given by Husserl uh, in his Prolegomena and Logical Investigations. There are ones you can give from the pragmatists. You can give one from Wittgenstein, for example. Why do you say you're not a... Because I don't believe... I don't... Well, for one thing, I don't think his table of judgments, um, you know, works. Or, or table of categories, sorry. Um, and I think that a lot of the argumentation that he gives in the aesthetic doesn't ultimately cash out in the way that he wants. He wants them to. There's a lot of things that Kant got right, but his ultimate conclusion I don't think is correct. So, yes. Um... Yeah, so it's all wrong. And then at the end here, he says, Rem's succinct charitable response can be found here. Sarcastic. It seems that one needs to be a Kant scholar, or at least a graduate student, to grasp the product of this humble 19-year-old undergraduate's years of immense scholarship and powerful philosophical synthesis. All I've done in this is put very clear what my own positions are, explain that I am not so influenced by these thinkers as as philosophical indie does believe me to be, and that there is a way to recant in a non-skeptical way. And that just completely diffuses his entire article about me. And there's nothing more really to say about it. Um, you know, 
Like what what was the point of the article? Why not or why not even message me um and ask, "Hey, do you, are you a transcendental idealist?" And again, my positions on stuff are, you know, are changing, are always changing as I study and read more and, you know, try to get closer to the truth and whatnot. Um, but, you know, there you go, I guess. I guess he's reading it. I am, I, I am pro Kant in that Kant got a lot of things right and he's very important to read. But I don't accept transcendental idealism. Oh, yeah. And it's funny. He cites Boghossian as a counter to me, even though, like, Boghossian is one of my favorite authors. And I've literally used him in a bunch of my Reddit posts arguing against epistemic anti-realism. Um, so, I don't know. Okay, there's that. Uh, 